you, Mr. Chairman, very much. And uh, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that Mr. Micah, uh, the uh, ranking member of the full committee, be allowed to uh, sit in on the subcommittee. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank the panel for being here, and especially uh, Admiral Allen and uh, Master Chief Bowen, um, for your incredible commitment, dedication, and service. And I, I can't tell you how disheartened and saddened I am that what is probably one of your last hearings or your last one on the budget uh, has to come at a time when uh, you were put in the position that you are with, with this budget. And earlier this month, uh, we know the President transmitted his proposed budget for 2011, and the, uh, the budget slightly increases amounts available to the Federal Maritime Commission, uh, but it's overall funding for the Maritime Administration and what I think are nothing short of uh, reckless and inconscionable slashing of funding for the Coast Guard operation and acquisitions has to be brought before us. Um, to say that I'm troubled by what was proposed doesn't come close to covering it. Uh, we listened uh, over the years as the Coast Guard was asked to do more with less, and Admiral Allen on many of occasions you pointed that out how uh, whether it was in the, uh, the 70s or the 80s or the 90s, that Congress would increase the mandates for the Coast Guard. Uh, you desperately needed more personnel. You desperately needed more operations and maintenance dollars. You desperately needed acquisition dollars. And uh, all those requests were ignored for decades. The Coast Guard, uh, through the incredible dedication of its men and women, managed to carry out its mission. Uh, and then we embarked upon Operation Deepwater. Um, we all know the transition that the Coast Guard had to assume with Homeland Security. And uh, at a time when the Coast Guard, I think, was deeply troubled, uh, Admiral Allen, you were incredibly the right man at the right time to come in and get the Coast Guard sort of on the straight track here. Um, with all this having been said, uh, the President has said that this budget, his budget, reflects his priorities in tough economic times. Uh, but I don't know how any of us can support a budget for the Coast Guard uh, which makes it a priority to cut our ability to safeguard American lives at sea and secure our ports and waterways from terrorist attack. These reductions in force and capabilities can only be interpreted as undermining port security. And one of my big concerns uh, over the time as chairman of this subcommittee and my time on this subcommittee is that while aviation security has received almost a blank check over the years since September 11th, we have fought and scraped for port security dollars to keep up with, keep up with um, the incredible threat and challenge that we have from terrorist operations at our ports. I don't understand how these actions can possibly be the priority of any administration. Under the President's budget, the Coast Guard will be forced to operate with less people aboard fewer assets with less financial support. It's a recipe for disaster. The budget proposes to eliminate more than 1,100 jobs at a time when not only record numbers of Americans are out of work, but it's time over the last couple of years where we attempted to strengthen the numbers for the personnel of the Coast Guard, made minus increases, and now we're going to slide all the way back down the hill. It just doesn't make any sense to me. We're going to abolish five specially trained anti-terrorist teams responsible for providing security at our largest ports, reduce the number of vessels capable of carrying out Coast Guard missions, close air stations in the Great Lakes, and permanently ground five newly re-engined enhanced helicopters, turning them into multi-million dollar supply closet items. Not the right way to go. Um, Admiral Allen, on many occasions you have appeared before this subcommittee and said the Coast Guard must do away with the attitude that it simply can do more with less. You were right, sir, when you said those things. Unfortunately, the message you have received from the Commander-in-Chief is that the Coast Guard must do even more with less. It's contrary to everything that many of us have worked for for decades. I think it's simply unacceptable. The budget does not reflect the priorities of the American people, 
nor does it provide the resources necessary for success of Coast Guard missions. Admiral Allen, you have characterized this budget as a, necessarily, as a necessary short-term sacrifice to place the Coast Guard on a better footing in the future. Yet this budget not only fails to increase funding for the construction of new, more capable vessels and aircraft, it slashes several programs to the bare minimum number of airframes and hulls required to keep the production line open. So what exactly is the service sacrificing personnel and near-term mission success for? I share the Commandant's concern about the long-term needs of the Coast Guard, the fleet, and for that reason I have long advocated for the acceleration of the recapitalization efforts. During the previous administration, we were fortunate to have a very strong bipartisan effort from members of this subcommittee, members of the full committee, and members of Congress to understand the urgent need to increase the pace of acquisitions in, uh, in, a, in a shorter period of time. And lastly, uh, I want to express my extremely strong opposition to the proposal to eliminate five maritime safety and security teams, including the team stationed at our nation's second largest port, the Port of New York, New Jersey. For those who are not aware, these specially trained and equipped teams provide critical anti-terrorist capabilities. We should be increasing these teams, if anything, not decreasing them. It's the wrong direction to go to even consider that we can do with less of them. The Coast Guard already falls short in its requirement to escort high-interest vessels. The President's proposed cuts would only further endanger our homeland security. I don't say those words lightly. I don't see how we can, we can interpret it in any other way than that. At a time when homeland security can't be further reduced, and let's face it, across America, the further we get from September 11th, the more most Americans think this is something that is in ancient history, and it's not. I hope my colleagues will join with me uh, on this subcommittee and with you, Mr. Chairman, and with the full committee um, in, in finding a way to keep these drastic budget cuts from happening. I'm also concerned by some of the proposals made for the Maritime Administration. The President has failed to request any funding for federal loan guarantees to support construction of new U.S.-built, U.S. flag vessels in our shipyards, something that we desperately need. This funding supports critically needed jobs for American shipbuilders and U.S. merchant mariners, yet no attention was given to this program. I hope my colleagues will work in a cooperative and bipartisan way to restore a robust investment in our domestic shipbuilding industry for many reasons, for the jobs and for the economic situation and for the homeland security implications that that has. Lastly, the President has proposed a slight increase in the budget for the Federal Maritime Commission. This will provide the resources necessary for the Commission's expected workload, and I support the proposed funding level for that particular area. I want to thank all of our witnesses for appearing this morning and for their testimony. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Federal Maritime Commission Chairman, Mr. Ledinsky. I welcome you. I wish you well. Uh, I in your first appearance of the subcommittee, I, I hope we'll have a uh, long and cooperative arrangement, and I'm sure that we will. And as well as Maritime Administrator um, David Matsuda, who previously worked for Senator Lautenberg, uh, a very close friend and colleague of mine from New Jersey, and I know I join with all of my colleagues in wishing the Senator a very speedy recovery. Um, and once again, uh, Admiral Allen, I'd like to thank you and Master Chief Bowman for remarkable dedication, remarkable commitment to your country, remarkable commitment to the men and women of the Coast Guard. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm really saddened that you're coming to the end of your term at such a critical time. Um, and I'm really sorry that it had to be the tone that it did in this particular hearing for this budget, but there's no way to sugarcoat that. Uh, having said that, Master Chief, I want to particularly commend you for your efforts to improve the quality of life issues for the men and women of the Coast Guard, something that you've done in a remarkable and dedicated way. Thank you for raising the alarm on the sad state of Coast Guard housing, and thanks to your leadership, although we've not come up with the right solution at this point, um, I think we're clearly focused in understanding that this is something we can't let go and that we're going to continue to work on uh, for the men and women of the Coast Guard and as a follow-up to your commitment that you've made at this point. Um, Admiral Allen, I 
find it difficult to come up with the right words to express my appreciation for your remarkable service to our country, whether it was at a time of uh, Katrina when you took over and uh, clearly the federal government was floundering in its effort, uh, got nothing but the highest marks from everyone involved in bringing that situation under control. As I mentioned earlier, I think you took over the Coast Guard at an extremely difficult period in time with many challenges and questions that were raised. And thanks to your uh, unique quality and style of leadership, I think the service has fully regained its footing. And, sir, you're to be commended for that. That was no easy task. I thank you for your selfless efforts on behalf of the men and women of the Coast Guard. Uh, I appreciate your advice and appreciate your personal friendship over the years and, once again, uh, your tremendous commitment to our country. With that, I thank you very much. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I thank you. I want to thank you very